Do you do drugs? Awesome. But for those who want to know what it's like without ending up in a 2x3 meter room with metal bars, the closest you'll get is probably LSD Dream Emulator. I'm sure most of you know what it is because even though when it released in 1998 for the PlayStation in Japan, not many people knew about it, it has gotten much more popular in the past decade, partly because of just how f***ing weird the whole game is. There is no reason for anything that happens in the game. What is that? I don't know. Who is that? I don't know. Why does that do that? I don't know. You can always take a different path and end up seeing something even weirder than the last thing you saw. After all, this is supposed to emulate a dream on LSD, and while I cannot confirm whether or not this is an accurate representation, it's still pretty interesting. But that's not the game I want to talk about. I want to talk about a game that was heavily inspired by it, which there aren't many of. You would think creating this kind of game is easy, you just throw random stuff and call it a day. But the only other game I know of that has a similar idea is Yumi Nikki, and that one was released in 2004. The one I want to talk about is The Indigo Parallel. Now, I only discovered this game because the developer emailed me and gave me a code for it. Thank you, Chris Ellen. It's also much newer, only being a year old. Given that the game is said to be heavily inspired by LSD Dream Emulator, you can expect a lot of similar things. And there are quite a few similar things. In Dream Emulator, absolutely nothing makes Bruh. sense. So just like that game, there is also no reason for anything that happens. Even the settings menu is off, to say the least. There is a bunch of places you can walk around in and where you'll see a variety of things. The only slight difference between them is that the Indigo Parallel is a little more linear. In LSD Dream Emulator, you only have a certain amount of time to explore as much as you can. Since the game was made back in 1998, all you could do was just walk. There is almost nothing you can interact with. Basically, the whole game consisted of exploring new places and being mesmerized because of how weird each room looks. Weird because of how dated the visuals look, but also because whatever was happening genuinely made zero sense. The Indigo Parallel doesn't have a set time limit because... Well, I don't think it's a dream. I did say it was more linear, and that's because there is some resemblance of a path depending on where you go. But honestly, I don't even think I've seen every place that this game has. It would take me a while to find every room because there is little to no guidance in the game. You basically just poke around and see what happens, and eventually you'll end up in a new place. When you begin Dream Emulator, you start out in a small room, and if you touch literally anything, you go into a different space. The Indigo Parallel starts out the same way, in a room, except it looks like it's in a spaceship, and you don't have to be afraid of touching the wrong thing. You press these buttons next to doors to open up different pathways, and sometimes you'll see weird robot bugs. Sadly, you can't squash them. When you choose a path, you'll head to a different room where there's either one path or sometimes other paths you can take. So the game looks like it has a tree-type path structure to it, but it also doesn't. It's hard to explain. But that's why I said I don't think I've explored everything in this game. You also have no idea how close you are to the end because the end screen just appears abruptly. Yes, there are endings. And funnily enough, in the end screen, the game's name changes to the indigo perpendicular instead of parallel. 10 out of 10 humor. Like I said, in Dream Emulator, you can't interact with anything in the game. You can only walk around and observe. Well, in Indigo Parallel, being newer and having some upgraded tech, you can actually interact with things. Not always, a lot of the time you can only observe the places you're in, but sometimes there are segments where you have to find something or pick up a laser gun and shoot the weird mechanical bugs, lasers on the roof, or other cars. Yeah, there's some variety. In one segment, you can even turn into those robot bugs to crawl into smaller spaces. The game also surprisingly has some puzzles. Very few though, I've only encountered like two or three after playing for an hour, but their difficulty can range from a small children's puzzle to electrical engineering. The whole game can be summarized with the sentence, nothing makes sense. That also extends to the visuals, where it also doesn't make sense. Only a few of the places you'll see actually look reasonable, one of them being the starting room. As soon as you choose a path and go somewhere else, that all goes out the window. A lot of the places are coded in random textures. Random to the point where you can't even tell what the place is supposed to resemble. Is this supposed to be some weird street, or is it supposed to be some purgatory? Because so far this just looks like a regular street in LA. Sometimes the walls will even be covered in Japanese letters. When you're in the back rooms, you can go to Tokyo, which looks to be the most normal place in this game, for the most part. Is it weird for me to say that it's a beautiful mess? Because it is definitely a mess, like this ain't normal. But it still has its own essence that makes it complete. It kind of reminds me of those art exhibits where people do the stupidest stuff ever, and then they call that art. Like, this is a painting, but would you call this art? to each of their own. There are also some creatures in this game, if you can call them that, and they also don't follow any shred of common sense. They are the most deformed things you'll ever see in your life. A lot of them are actually just pictures that always look at you because they're not 3D. And apparently this game has a thing for eyes because you'll be seeing a lot of eyes in this game. I'm pretty sure this thing is just a stock photo of someone with a comically large eye as a head. And I'm sure this was done on purpose, but the main color you'll be seeing is blue. 
There's also a lot of red areas, but there's more blue than anything. Maybe it's because of the name Indigo Parallel, even though Indigo is more purple, but eh, what do I know? Normally a game would have a coherent formula to what the audio sounds like. That could be the style of the music or ambience, or it could be the sound effects that match the theme and are relevant to what's happening on screen. As you can imagine, that all goes out the window with this game. The only coherent thing is how abnormal it is. In most areas, there's always a background ambient sound. Not a sound that's related to the environment because I don't know what sound this place would make, but it's usually something low tone or somber. Sometimes though it does get more energetic if it wants to. The other sound effects maybe are related, like doors obviously sound like doors, but beyond that it gets weird. Like during this part where you're one of the Roombas, there's this voice in the background. I have no idea who that is, but it sounds like the writer just slammed their keyboard when writing their script. Speaking of voice lines, there is some dialogue, and almost all of it will sound like a text-to-speech voice. You hear it almost every time you end up in the beginning room. Status, there are no more branching pathways. Now you might call that lazy, but I would say that it's a very fitting considering the methodology of this game. Like this game's whole thing is about being weird, and hearing a synthetic voice is much weirder than a normal voice. Plus, all you Twitch and TikTok people are probably more used to it anyway. <laughs> I'm aware that the very idea of a story for this game is impossible to imagine, but the reason I'm talking about it is because the other game that the Indigo Parallel was inspired by is the Stanley Parable. For those that don't know, Stanley Parable is a game where you're someone named Stanley, and there's a narrator that's narrating your life, basically telling you where to go. But you're encouraged to not listen to him because you can get some funny dialogue. Out, 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 go, go, go. Eight. 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 Now, I think perhaps you've misunderstood Eight. me, so let Eight. me reiterate as clearly as I can. This is not the Stanley Parable. So if the Indigo Parallel is inspired by the Stanley Parable, there's got to be some kind of plot, right? Like when you appear in the starting room, there's a voice that will sometimes tell you your status level. Status somewhat normal. No idea what that means, but hey, it's something. Or during this part where you can choose to save or destroy these weird things. The ones you save at the end will thank you for saving them. Thank you for saving us. Again, no idea what the f*** this could be referring to. Or this part where you have to touch all these blue spinning... things. Every one of them will have some kind of dialogue, and they kinda relate to each other. Bashing my head with a katana makes me feel something. What I once found delicious, I now find repulsive. Daisy is a problem. Daisy is my only problem. No, Daisy, I will not take those pills. Those pills are killing me. And then you'll find this 2D picture of what I think is someone crying. If so, then just from this area alone, I can say that the story is... This guy has a mental condition that the doctors are telling him about, and when he gets together with this girl named Daisy, she tries to get him to take his medication, which is making him change. But he doesn't want to, which is making her sad, and making him depressed and go on these weird trips, also known as this game. There, story concluded. There's a good chance that's probably not what's going on here, but there are other scenes in this game that kind of hint towards that. Especially because the name Daisy comes up a few times, and some of those times she's asking Tom to take some pills. Tom, please take your pills. I don't like you when you are like this. So, Chris, let me know how close I am. Oh wait, that's exactly what it says on the story page. The Indigo Parallel is the definition of weird, as if I haven't said that word enough times. It's a kind of game where you can make literally anything, even if it doesn't make sense, and have it be something normal. Like, games have certain formulas, but this one is purposefully made wrong, which makes it quite a different experience compared to every other game. It's probably something you'll more likely remember because of how abnormal it is. Even the updates mimic that. On the store page, update 3.6 says, I hit a horse image in the game. It's also the kind of game that encourages you to explore as much as possible, primarily because of that horse image, but also like, apparently some weird stuff happens in the mines when you input a special code somewhere. Because of how non-descriptive that is, I bet that it's an easter egg that will take a hundred centuries to find out. But it's there. But this is truly a different kind of game that I do think you should try. I probably wouldn't even call it a game actually, it's more like a sightseeing tour. Very different from my natural one though. For the full experience, I would actually encourage you to try LSD Dream Emulator first and then play the Indigo Parallel. That way you can see which one you prefer, but also to see the parallel between them. Ah, get it? Because... <laughs> Definitely do try this game out because it is something unique. And let me know if one of you find that horse image. I'm intrigued. So give it a go. It's worth it. But anyways, bye.